Hey guys, welcome back. Well, today we're going to check out Lightroom, okay? This is for those of you who have never worked with it before, and it's a quick introduction. So after watching this video, you should be able to get started, okay? So let's check it out. Here we go. All right, so you're completely new to Lightroom. You have no idea where to start, and, uh, you know, you're kind of... Uh, uh, scared if you will because everybody's talking about Lightroom how that is for professional photographers and how the learning curve is steep well that's actually not necessarily the case because if we go through the basics you will be uh, up and running in no time right now regardless of what you see in front of you right now I mean whether you see this window or something else what we're going to do is we're just going to go in to file and import photos and videos. Okay, that's all. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the source right here. Where do I want to get these photographs from? Well, in my case, I have an SD drive out of my camera and I put it in the computer. So that is located right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to first go to uncheck all. Now everything is checked. As you can see, I'm going to uncheck all everything will become somewhat dark and now I'm going to go in and I'm going to import some images that I can work with. Now quite a lot going on here. Let's uh, find a couple that are suitable. What I did is I went outside and I uh, basically screwed up some images on purpose so we got something to work with. So I'm going to take this one and uh, let's see we'll take uh, this one and we'll take this one and let's see we'll do one more. Let's do that, okay? So we've got four images, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on one of them, and as we do that, you'll see that these are now all selected. And down here, you can see four photographs, 101 uh, megabyte, okay? So when you're happy with your selection, what you're gonna do is you're gonna click on import. And as we do that, we'll give this a sec, and there you go. Now. You can see that my four images have now been imported right here and the main thing here is these two tabs right now library and develop in your library you load up the images that you want that you want to work on and in the develop tab you uh, work on the image that you're going to work on okay so the way that this works is it takes the picture off of your sd card you add information in lightroom and the information that is added in Lightroom doesn't change your original picture. Once you decide to export out of Lightroom, it will take the original photo, well, a copy of it. It will take the information that you added in Lightroom, put that together and save that out as a new file. Okay, just so you know. All right, so now that we have these four and we're in library mode, I can go in, I can hover over one of these and I can hit the space bar like so. And what it will do is it will pull up that image, okay? But I'm more interested in developing this. So let's go into develop mode. And we'll give that a sec as that loads up. And once we do that, we get a lot of information over here on the right. And that's what we're interested in, okay? First of all, I can go in with my left mouse here. And as I move around in this area, you can see that I got a lot of detail that I can see if I like, right? Now, if I don't want to, I can just release that and it'll go back. And I want to improve the quality of this image, okay? Now, I mentioned that this is a CRT image, not a JPEG. And the big difference here is if you shoot uh, pictures on your camera in raw format, then a lot of the information is stored, but not necessarily compressed into an image uh, in a state that you can't change it anymore. Once you shoot JPEGs on your camera, a lot of information is already baked in. And you can't change that. Okay, so I like to shoot in uh, raw and in this case CRT is a Canon raw file. Okay, so let's see what we got up here. We've got a histogram and I'll talk about this as we move forward. Now, first of all, if we go down here, you have WB, which stands for a white balance. Now, if you have a fairly sophisticated camera, then you have options to change your white balance. But what you can do here is you can say, okay, I wanna leave it as shot by the camera, or you can go and search for presets. So let's say daylight. And you can see it immediately has a totally different feel to it. And this is related to a, uh, a number in Kelvin, which stands for what is daylight, what is moonlight, what is night, and so forth. 
So tungsten, for example, would make it kind of moonlight blue, like that, okay? So very powerful, but for now, let's go with daylight, kind of like that, okay? So next, you can manually tweak the temperature, like I said, right here, temperature, 5500 Kelvin. I can push that towards blue and make it cold, night, or even maybe alien-like. Or I can push that way, way up and make that very hot, like, I don't know, surface on Mars or whatever, right? But we're gonna push that back. And actually, let's go in and if we do daylight, it's 5500 again. And I shot it at slightly less, okay? So, pretty close, okay. So then the tint, I would typically leave that one alone. And uh, the reason is it pushes towards green or purple, but in both cases, usually that looks way off, okay? So I'm just gonna hit Control Z to jump back and uh, not touch that. Then, okay, the tone, as far as exposure is concerned, I'll show you what happens. You can blow it out or underexpose it completely. And I'm gonna leave that up a little bit. Contrast, I kind of want to improve a little bit, but what happens in front of here, in the darker areas, when you bump up that contrast, you see how that loses all the detail. So be careful with that. We kind of want to see all the detail in our image, okay? So what about highlights? Highlights will do the opposite. It will blow out the white, okay? So we're gonna push that down to a point where we can still see detail, like so. Then we have our shadows. Let's bring that down a little bit. Our white values. Then we have our black values. And then we're gonna go down here to clarity, which is always very nice. Vibrance, which is color related, like so. And then we have the saturation. If you want it to be extremely colorful or basically black and white, that's how you can do with that. Let's go with something like this, all right? Now, then you can go a step further if you like, and you can go in to your curves and you can tweak that. But basically that's what we've been doing. So I'm just gonna hit Control Z, leave that alone. And then down here you have your hue, saturation and levels. And here you can play with the level of red, orange and so forth. We're not gonna do that right now, okay? As this is an introduction. So I'm happy with this, right? Now, one thing I forgot to mention, before we go into develop mode, I'll just jump back to library. I got these four uh, pictures here, right? Now let's say that they're not four, but 400. And I want to kind of quickly go through my images and decide which ones I wanna work on and which ones I don't like, okay? So let's say I definitely wanna work on this one. Well, here you have the star system, okay? So I can go and select this image and I can say, okay, I want to rate this a five because I like it. When I do that, five stars appear right here and it automatically jumps to the next one. Now let's say I'm not too crazy about this one, so I'm not gonna rate it at all or a four or three or two, whatever. But in this case, I'm not gonna rate it. Let's have a look at this one. Actually, this is out of focus, so we're not gonna rate this one, we'll rate this one, okay? I'll hit five on the keyboard, which is the same as clicking right here, like so. Like I said, we're gonna skip that one. And then this one, not too bad, but I'm not thrilled about it. So we're gonna skip that one as well. So now if you want to go to develop mode, what we can do is we can set a filter and we can say, okay, I want to have only the rated images. Now we will show these two, okay? So now I can go into develop and I can choose the next one right here. And let's see if we can tweak this one. Now, like I said, um, although parts of it are in focus, there's an extreme amount of backlight right here. So let's see if we can tweak that, okay? So we're gonna go back in again. It's our raw file, which is what we want. We're gonna start with a temperature. Um, I am gonna see if daylight will help. Not a huge change there. And probably because as shot, I shot at exactly 5,500, so nothing is changing. So if I go to cloudy, you see we get a little bit more color, okay? But we'll leave it at as shot. Now I can 
bump it up manually if I like, but we'll deal with that later. I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm gonna look at the exposure. I wanna bring that up a little bit, and as you can see, more details become visible. As a result, I need to increase the contrast a bit, which will drop that down a bit more. And now let's look at the highlights. Now, when we push down the highlights, especially in these corners here, you see that more detail comes back in. Not a lot, but a little bit. So we're gonna keep that fairly low. Shadows, you can see that by pushing that to the right, we get a lot more detail in the image, so that's good. Let's look at the whites. Let's bring that down. And what you don't wanna do, and now we're gonna look at this histogram up here. Here you have the dark areas and the light areas. Now, when you push that to the right, you see that it's going basically off the chart here. So that's blown out, right? And when you start to bring that back and it's between these two ends, you know that it's a bit better, okay? So let's go with something like this. Black, same deal. Bring that down a little bit. Then we're gonna go to the clarity. Don't go nuts on that. Vibrance. And let's see, saturation. Now, if you wanna know what the difference is between um, your original and what you did, you can hit the Y on your keyboard, okay? And then you'll see a comparison between the two. And you hit Y again, and that's how you jump back, okay? Now, as you can see, a significant difference, okay? Now, let's jump back to this guy right here. And here you have the same difference. This is the original, this is one after tweaking. So uh, once you're happy with this, what you can do is you can go in and you can decide, I'll hit Y once again, you can decide that you wanna export this image, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to uh, File and we're gonna go to Export. And you can do multiple if you like, you can select all, but I'll just do one right now. And I want to save that on my hard drive to my desktop in a folder called uh, Untitled Export. And uh, let's see, I don't want to add that to a catalog, anything like that. I can uh, rename if I like. So I can call this uh, rocks, for example. And if I have multiple, it will auto number, start numbering, all right? Now, I don't have any video, so I'm not worried about that. I can save them out as a JPEG if I want, as a PSD, a TIFF, a DNG, and so forth. So I'm just gonna leave the JPEG. Quality, 100% is fine. Uh, sRGB, leave it like that. Uh, let's see, um, the metadata, I want to include all of that. So uh, what was my uh, focal distance, what was my shutter speed and so forth. And this is pretty cool. If I select watermarking, I can go in and I can actually, uh, for example, say simple uh, copyright watermark so that people don't run off with my images, okay? And that will then be added into that image. So uh, once I have all that, I'm gonna click on export. And that's basically it. So now if I open up Photoshop, hang on. Well guys, we're in uh, Photoshop and you can see that this is the file that we exported, okay? So that's uh, all there's to it. Of course, there's a lot more to learn in Lightroom, but this will hopefully get you started, okay? So uh, please hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more Lightroom videos, please let me know. And that said, thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.